Okay, let's talk about the PSAT and the NMSQT, and we're going to specifically be talking about math. So most of you out there are familiar with the PSAT, and of course it's the practice SAT test. So um, you're probably around, say, 10th or 11th grade, I'm just assuming. Now a little bit about myself, and then I'll get into more about uh, the NMSQT. I am a math teacher, taught uh, middle school math, high school math, even some college, I have a degree in math master's education. I've been doing this a long, long time and um, helped a lot of young people get into um, the college of the choice. But really, it's going to come down to how hard you're willing to work. So you're in school now. Obviously, you're, you got courses, you're busy. But really, what's going to determine, um, from my experience, whether you're going to you know get an exceptional PSAT score or qualify for, let me just briefly um, kind of go off on a tangent here or get back to what I originally should have said is the NMSQT. This is the National Merit uh, Scholarship uh, Qualification Test. I'm pretty sure that's what, uh, if I got my acronyms uh, correct, but I definitely, it is the National Merit System. And but, uh, basically, you use your PSAT score as part of to see if you qualify for uh, scholarships. Uh, that is huge. So, you know, I myself went to school on a scholarship after I did a tour in uh, the United States Marine Corps, but I went to a school on a full, complete scholarship, and in today's terms, the school I went to is like around $60,000 per year. So <laughs> you can do the math. I went to a private school in uh, California, University of San Diego, and um, which was a fantastic education, but you know, even at that time it was expensive and you know, now it's it's just a tremendous amount of money. But really, even to get into that school, you know, you need uh, excellent SAT scores and grades, but many people are also gonna qualify for scholarships. So, you know, you're, you have a golden opportunity if you're taking the PSAT, you know, you're still building your resume um, for for college, okay? so. Take advantage of this time because you're not going to have it once you once you uh, you know you're a senior. It's almost I don't want to say too late, but you know, the majority of what you've done you know as a freshman, sophomore, and junior is going to be um, uh, your package for at least like early admissions. But really, you want to be going for uh, the best scores you can, as many scholarships as you can, and I don't care where you're at academically in terms of mathematics. Even if you struggle, I seen amazing turnarounds so it's possible with you as well now I'm gonna get into this particular problem here in just a second um, if you like my teaching style I'm gonna encourage you to check out my PSAT NM SQT math prep course I'm gonna leave the link in the description of this video if that interests you it's very very comprehensive uh, goes through uh, tons of um, algebra advanced algebra geometry everything you you're gonna need to know to uh, you know to do exceptional on this test but with that being said I got a nice little problem here for you so if you think you can answer this problem uh, you should pause it and and give it a whirl. Now, what the question here, I don't want to give too much away, but you got a triangle with some information on it. I want to know this length, length C of this particular triangle. So if you think you can do it, maybe go ahead and pause the video. And I would say for our purposes, let's imagine this was a PSAT question. Um, let's say maybe give yourself two, three minutes uh, if you want to go ahead and try it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve it now. So hopefully, let me solve it and then I'll explain where a lot of students get uh, confused. So they'll look at this and they'll be like, okay, I know it's a right triangle and I know the Pythagorean theorem applies, which absolutely does, but what's the problem here? Well, I got one length of this triangle, but I don't have the other length, right? You're like, well, where's the other length? Well, you gotta be really careful on the SAT and the PSAT. There, there's times where they wanna kinda trick you, okay? So what's the trick here? Well, the trick is uh, you're, if, you deter, if you know what kind of triangle this actually is. Now, some of you may be uh, in the 10th grade and you might very well be uh, in geometry. So if you haven't gotten to this portion of it, then you're kind of like, all right, you know, don't beat yourself up too much. But basically, this is a special triangle. The, these two sides here 
are congruent. That's what these little lines mean. Now, you might look at the triangle and be like, oh my goodness, that's not that's not fair. You know, they don't, you didn't draw it correctly. It should look more uh, exactly the same. Well, sometimes they do things like that, uh, uh, some of these tests, to, to see if you are paying attention to the details. Let me give you another quick example. I'm going to get back to this problem, but let's talk about like parallel lines, right? I could draw two lines. Let me just not make it a little bit less subtle. Let's say something like this, right? So you have line one and line two. I have, let's say, a transversal that's crossing through them. Now, if I say, if I, right here, I can explicitly say line one is parallel to line two. Well, if you know that, then you know a, a lot of different properties about these um, angles being formed. However, that may not be the case. You might just see something like this, where you have an arrow on each one of these lines indicating that these two are parallel, but they may not draw the the, the actual sketch exactly parallel. Okay, I've seen this before, and they're kind of trying to trick you. So you got to pay attention. So if you pick that up, that's awesome. Okay, so if you say, oh, well, this side is the same as this side, so that's good. Okay, now you have your um, A, right? You have an A uh, length, and you also have a B length. So you can you can go ahead and find out what C is. Now you could go, okay, well, A is going to be 8x squared plus 2x squared plus B is 8x squared plus 2x squared is going to be equal to C squared. Now you could um, actually do the problem this way, but this is the long way. This is like not the best way to go. Okay, so where do you think I'm going with this? Well, this actually happens to be a special a special triangle, okay? And there's two special triangles that you really, really are going to need to know or want to know for sure um, for the PSAT, okay? And the SAT or the ACT, whatever you're going to be taking. So you obviously you need to know the Pythagorean theorem, but the special triangles that you want to know is the 45 degree, 45 degree right triangle, okay? These are This is a right triangle. And another right triangle you need to know is the 30, 60 degree uh, right triangle. Okay, these are special triangles, and without the aid of a calculator or arduous algebraic, you know, uh, work, you can easily figure out what this is. So, in a special right triangle for 45, 45. Let me actually kind of draw. Yeah, let me do a little bit bigger. Now, if you don't this, and by the way, too, this very well may be in the formula sheet that you may get. And I, I have to double check. That's why I don't want to confirm it. But I'm pretty sure, I'm almost certain that you will have formulas um, available to you. So if you have, let's, let's say this, right? Here we go. The sides are the same. Okay, that means that this is 45 and this is 45. So you can also do it this way because you have 90 degrees. So I can, you can see a 45, 45 degree angle in various different ways uh, by just using like geometric symbols with like congruency. Okay, but basically the hypotenuse is going to be any side, and these sides are the same, times the square root of 2. Okay, any side times the square root of 2. You definitely need to know that. So the answer here is very simple. Okay, it's just going to be 8x squared plus 2x times the square root of 2. Right, so we could just write it just like this, and that's it. So that, if you recognize this, that would take you all of about... 15 seconds okay however what happens with a lot of people on these tests is they're not they're they're not looking for you know maybe being tricked and if they do see how to do it they may immediately jump into like okay doing it the long way because right here okay although you need to you can get to the answer this is going to take a lot of time and time is of the essence um, on this test so anyways the only way you're going to get better at these questions is twofold. Okay, uh, the first is you got to know your math, right? You got to you actually got to know your math. And right now you're in school, you probably have already taken algebra one. All right, that's hugely important. You got to get you know past geometry, and you're going to need to know some algebra two as well. So depending on where you're at in your studies, these are the, this is the kind of level of mathematics that you need to be a master of. Now, if you're 
already in pre-calculus or whatnot, you're saying, okay, well, I've already taken those courses. It doesn't mean, just because you've taken a course doesn't mean you've completely mastered it. And that's why, let's say you're in geometry, but maybe you didn't do, you know, maybe you got a B in Algebra 1. You've got to go back independently and build up your skills. So, you know, using a program like mine or something else, you know, out there, build up your math skills first. Really go back and build your math skills up. And then obviously the second thing, once you've done this, then you really got to go in and just take a ton of practice tests. So you can, um, you know, apply those skills, understand the questions, and then there's a lot of different test taking strategies to apply and all that kind of good stuff. So you can get yourself a hold of a good Kaplan book, Princeton Review. There's a ton of these things out there that are very exceptional material. However, if you don't have the fundamental math skills, you're not going to be able to figure out the problem anyways. Okay, so get your skills down, uh, then get into taking a lot of practice tests. If you follow that kind of formula, you're going to do very well. Um, and of course, you know, the benefits could be tremendous. You know, get into the college of your choice, scholarships. I mean, this is just opens up a ton of opportunities for you. So again, I'm going to leave um, the link to my uh, PSAT uh, test prep course in the description of this video. I also literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. Hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Many of them it will uh, help you uh, uh, prepare for this test. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave us some feedback. Uh, you're you're going to be taking a PSAT. Are you going to be doing the SAT or the ACT? Is this uh, something that you're also considering? Remember, um, depending on what college you're going for, some of them kind of prefer the ACT over the SAT. And they are different. They're similar. There's a lot of similarities, but there are differences. Okay. But again, I want to wish you all the best in your um, you know your college preparation it's worth working hard just remember you know take advantage of your you know everything that's available at your school you know uh, your your teachers etc if you happen to be someone like say a homeschooler out there then hey you know just keep working hard but again the majority of um, what is going to count in in my opinion through what I've seen through the experience is going to be what you're going to do above and beyond school Okay, and that was, that's where your personal initiative is going to come into play. But I wish you all the best and uh, have a great day and thank you for your time.